On this screencast, I want to show people how to create Google websites from scratch using nothing but a Gmail account. And on this video, we're going to do five things. We're going to go through the steps necessary to create the Google site first. Next, we're going to create a home page. Very basic, we're going to add some text to it, etc. Third, we're going to use some of uh, Google's customization um, tools to pretty up our website a little bit, make it look more like a website, not like a blank document. Next, we're going to add at least one other sub page so that we have a home page plus another page in addition. And lastly, we're going to go over Google's share settings for your website. That's like whether you want your website to be public on the web, whether you want it to be private so that while you're creating it, only you can view it, or somewhere in between, and we'll talk about that. First, a Google website, just so people know, is a free website powered by Google that you can create. They give you 100 megabytes of space to devote to things like attachments, if you want to put videos on your website, etc. And you can use them for a variety of purposes. You could create just a personal website for, um, you know, casual viewing. You could create a site with research collaborators on a research project that's kind of a central location for you to store documents, update other, re uh, other uh, people on your research. Or for our purposes, you could be an academic or graduate student looking to create an academic e-portfolio so that you can um, show future employers, maybe admissions officers at schools, things like your teaching statement, research statement, uh, different academic things you've done. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Gmail account. And when I say Gmail account, I really uh, mean that you should, that it should be an account that, that ends in gmail.com. So for instance, uh, University of Delaware uses Google Apps and all students have a uh, email account that's udel.edu that's powered by Google but isn't gmail.com email. That's probably not what you want to use because once you leave the institution that that email address would be affiliated with, uh, presumably anything that's under that Gmail account would, would um, be void after a certain time period. Whereas if you create your own gmail.com email address and use uh, create your website using that account, you basically take that with you wherever you go, where, whatever institution you're, you're affiliated with. So if you don't have a regular gmail.com email address, you should probably create one. It's free, and that's probably where you want to create your website. Okay, so once you're done that, you're going to go to your Gmail account. I'm already there. And on the top, you can see a, a row of different apps that Gmail has, YouTube, News, Drive, Calendar, etc. You're going to go to More. And once you're under More, you're actually going to go down to Even More. Click on that. And from there, we're actually going to go down even further under where Home and Office is. And you'll notice Google Sites are under Home and Office. Click on Google Sites. This will show you a list of all the websites you've created. This right here is my academic ePortfolio that already exists. And we're going to create a new site. It's going to ask you what, what um, template you want. This would be like um, if you want to create a classroom site, there are templates where the formatting is already done for you and you can just create your text um, using their standard formatting. I think that's a bad idea, and trust me on this, creating a blank template is going to be easier, unless you already know exactly what you want your website to look like, and in most cases, uh, most people who are new will not. Name your site. You're going to want to think very carefully about what to name your site, because while um, most of the address right here will be standard for all Google Sites, after that, you're going to have your own Google Sites authentic, unique name, and if it's a professional site, you want to make sure that uh, your name is professional also. So I'm going to say Curry Knight's sample site. And you'll notice you can put spaces and punctuation, etc., on your name. And of course, that will not show up on the actual address. So from there, we just do the simple security clearance. because it wants to make sure that you're not just a computer just generating endless Google websites. So here we go to Curry Knight's sample site. And as you can see, it's very bare bones. And uh, we're going to change that. We're going to make sure that there, it, it's a little bit prettier than that. It gets a little bit more color. But the first thing we want to do is edit this home page. You'll see that under uh, your edit mode, you see a few buttons on the upper right. There's edit page, 
new page, and we'll get to that in a bit. There's more, and that's for more options, and we'll also get to that in a bit. And then there's your share settings. But for now, we're going to edit the existing home page that we have. And you'll see it comes up with two different text boxes. One is for your title, the title of this particular you know page that people will see. And then the other is for text. So to my sample site. And then below that, you can put some text. Or, you know, you'll you'll get more creative with it than this, but this is just a, a short example of the text that you can add. And once you're done with your text, click Save, and you'll see that you see you um, see what you created, of course, without the text boxes. Great. So now that we've done that, and of course you can you know add to it however you'd like. We still notice that our website looks pretty drab. There's not a lot of color to it, etc. And anyone who stumbled on the website would kind of look at this and probably not be um, overly impressed. Well, Google has you covered because it offers you the ability to choose different themes for your website, the background colors, etc. And to do that, you're going to go to More in the upper right corner, and you're going to go down to Manage Site. And under Manage Site, you're going to go down to themes on the lower left at the very bottom. And you're going to see a, a variety of themes that you can choose from. You can shop around with some of these themes. Once you find one you like, you can preview that particular theme. And once you're really satisfied with that theme, you can save it. Keep in mind, of course, that you can go back and change themes as many times as you like. So if you save a theme one day and you wake up the next day and feel like changing your theme, you can actually change your theme and every single thing that you've put on your website, all the text, pictures, etc., will still show up, but the, diff the theme will be different behind it. So, and keep in mind, uh, for a professional website, you really want it to be a professional theme, so this slip shape cloud theme might not be appropriate or a treehouse theme for your professional website. So I am going to go ahead and choose uh, lavender panel and I can preview it here and it'll show me what that looks like for my website and uh, once I'm satisfied I save that and that becomes the theme for my entire website. To go back I hit this left arrow here that says Kareenite sample site. Go back and this shows me my sample website with the theme. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is create a new page. We go to New Page in the upper right, and just like it did for the website itself, it will ask you to name your page. You notice, of course, that your page URL is um, all of this right here, followed by whatever name you want to give to this subpage. So since we're talking about academic ePortfolios, I'm going to put um, my teaching. So now my URL looks something like that. Select the template, always keep it as web page. Uh, all the other stuff really isn't going to fit what we want to do, so always keep it there. Select a location. This is for the menu that shows up in the left corner of your website, which shows all the sub pages and pages that you have. You can either put my teaching above the home page or keep it below. And of course, most people put everything below the home page. So you're going to uh, put your page under Welcome to My Sample Site. Create, and I'll show you what that looks like. See, we have Welcome to My Sample Site, which is basically your home page, and then there's uh, My Teaching. So again, you can add some uh, text here. But again, you know, uh, that's your text to add, so you can go and uh, change and rechange that as much as you'd like. Once you're done, press Save in the upper right, 
and this is basically your page. Of course, right now it looks pretty bare bones, but that's only because this is a basic video that shows us the nuts and bolts. In future videos, I'll show you how to add different things like pictures and video to your website. So now we're going to talk about the share settings. So at this point, you probably only you probably want to be the only one who can see your website, especially when it's under construction. In fact, I would advise that. You don't want to put anything out there that's public if you really don't want it, people to see it, if it's not in good shape. For some reason, my uh, Google Sites default setting seems to be public on the web, and we want to change that because I don't want anyone stumbling on this bare bones site. So you can either do private, which means that you're the only one that can see it, and no one else could, let's say, stumble on it on a Google search. Or, this is another good option. Let's say you want friends or uh, your advisor to be able to see your website and make comments and maybe make changes. You can set it to anyone with the link. I'm going to do that right now. So go under Save. So anyone with the link can view this website. And here's how I give people the link. At the very lowest part of this, there's add, an option from Add to, for add people. So let's say that um, I want um, this is my other website or I'm sorry this is my other email address and since it's a Google email address even though it's not gmail.com um, this person which is you know actually me but let's suppose it's another person could actually see the website and I can either allow them to edit the website or just view the website. And I think I'm going to go with can edit the website. I can also um, make sure to notify people via email so that they will get a, a email with the link to my website. And if I want to, I can add a message. So I will share and save. And from there, um, both myself and then this other theoretical person will now be able to uh, view and edit my website. It will give them an email with the link. And again, you can change your privacy settings whenever you'd like. If you'd like to discontinue them from being able to view your website, you can go back to private. And since you're the owner, now only you can actually, you know, view your website again. And whenever you're ready to make it public, you can make it public by changing the settings again. And again, that's under your share settings at the upper right. So whenever you want to change, that's where you go. So we have created the Google site. We have added a home page. We've made the home page a little bit prettier. And we've added a separate page in addition to the home page and gone over our share settings all within about 10 or so minutes. So as you can see, there's some learning at the front end, but it's really not that difficult. In fact, I would encourage you to um, experiment to see what you can do. In future videos I'll show you how to insert different things like images, um, a chart, a document, a drawing, etc. There's a lot of stuff you can do here and it's relatively easy. So go through, experiment with it. Keep in mind that anything you do you can undo. So if you do something by mistake or you don't like it you can undo it. And if your settings are private you don't even really have to worry that anyone's going to see it anyway. So this is the first video. There will be more in the series where we get a bit more complex, but this should get you started.